today we're gonna can some chicken stock so in my back pot right here I have um, basically this is just a uh, deboned chicken bones uh, deboned chicken this is the bones of it with the gristle and all the fat has been the skin has been removed on it before it was boiled we just boiled it down until it basically the you know for about two hours and this is what was left this will form a gel overnight and you can skim the fat off the next morning and that's what i did so this would be pretty pretty fat free uh the uh, stock uh no salt or anything just just the uh, liquid from like i said boiling the uh, chicken bones for about two hours and uh overnight just skimmed off all the fat it'll form a layer on top and you can just scoop it up um chicken uh, stock takes 20 minutes to do in the pressure canner uh this is a uh just a regular pressure canner i'll, I'll show you the top when it gets time for that i'm gonna do them in pints and I, as you can see this thing will hold quite a few pints um i got eight i'm gonna start with to see if this is enough i put a little bit of water in each because you want to get the jars up to temperature for the hot liquid and uh, when i'm ready for them i'm gonna start uh i'll use them and uh so that's it everything's about ready i'm waiting for this to come to a slight boil and then i'll start the uh putting them in the actual jars uh if you can see on this uh the inside of the uh canner uh, this pot in particular has the three uh, hash marks uh, you can't see the bottom one but there's a uh, there's one right here there's one right here and there's one right down here so that's the, for, for doing a regular canning for an hour and 30 minutes or, or less you put it up to this bottom line um, no matter if you do in quarts or pints if you go anything over I think an hour and 40 minutes you got to use this next line up but uh, I've never done a recipe yet that requires that much time. So usually it's everything I've been doing is the bottom line down here. Uh, that actually comes with a book that has everything like detailed on how to do everything. But it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, chicken stock takes 20 minutes to, to do total. Um, so uh, let me get to the next step here and I'll show you. And one trick when you're doing any kind of canning. Uh, Pretty much every every jar you can, whether it's canning or a hot water bath, uh, always add two tablespoons of white vinegar, just plain white distilled vinegar, to your uh, to your pot. What that does, if uh, any liquid comes out the jars or the water itself being under pressure with the steam, it it won't make like a film on the outside of your jars. It just makes the jars a lot easier to clean. And the, the, if, it, if, if any liquid comes out while you're cooking, it doesn't uh, stick to the jars. The vinegar just helps it come, come off a lot better. So always, always put two tablespoons of vinegar in the water. Now, as far as the, uh, what, you, what you need to, for canning, uh, I bought this little kit off of Amazon. And they got various, various kits. Uh, this one seemed like a pretty good one when I bought it. Um, this is a... Uh, this is where you check your depth of your jars. You got the uh, they got the marks on it. The one is all the way at the, uh, the top here. Uh, get your jaw grabber, your lid grabber. This is just a ladle. Uh, and what you do is you get uh, some hot boiling uh, water. I heated mine up in a uh, the microwave just because it was easier. And basically, you take your lids and you soak them in the water. Just, just let them soak. It, it, get, it gets the bands uh, hot where they, they, they seal on the jar real good. Um, and uh, let's see here. Move the camera over. As you can see, my uh, chicken stock is balling pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, the jars out of my pressure. And I got, I got a little bit of water from the from the uh, pot in the jars. I'm gonna dump the water back in the pot. I'm gonna put the jars on my towel over here, and I'm gonna start to uh, I'm gonna start uh, jarring everything up. I'm gonna crank this up on a high uh, medium heat. You, you barely want it simmering while your jars are in there. And the uh, process is pretty straightforward. 
you basically uh, got the uh, the liquid. I'm gonna actually use a. Uh, I am actually just use a, a cup and what you do is you just take the liquid try not to make too much of a mess like I said these jars just came out the canner uh, and just basically fill them up and you want to leave a, a, a one inch headspace the bottom of this uh, funnel that, that comes with the kit uh, should leave it pretty close to having a one inch headspace. We got this little checker here. Like I said, you just put this, I'm trying to see in my camera, you just put that in there and if it's not quite hitting, you add a little bit. What I usually do is get them, get them close first and then I'll, I'll come back and uh, get them all perfect. I'll go ahead and uh, get everything uh, filled up and then I'll show the next step. And if you got one with a little bit too much in it, this back jar back here, what I like to do is just take a turkey baster and just scoop some of it out and then check it and scoop a little bit more out. So you can always add it back, I'm trying to make not 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 make too much of a mess here. And like I said, you just want to you want an inch. So these are all good. Now the uh, next step, you take some uh, paper towel or a rag. I, I have a rag here. I don't I don't really keep any paper towels in the house. Uh, let's see. And you uh. You add some vinegar to your rag just to wet it pretty good and always do this with your uh, when you're doing any kind of uh, meat or anything just you clean the uh, rims all the way around with uh, just vinegar straight vinegar on a rag and this helps the bands uh, seat pretty good on there so you won't have any sealing problems. Uh, of course, it's going to be under 10 pounds of pressure, and I've, I've uh, will always always do this, but I've never. You probably won't have one fail, but this is a, just a good idea. It'll it'll make sure your uh, your bands actually uh, seat on these jars. Just just wipe it with with a moistened vinegar towel, and it'll it'll just help it. Uh, where you won't have any issues. All right. And I don't usually soak the the uh, the bands the the, uh, the rings. I usually just soak the lids, and just basically take the lids out straight from here, and just just place them on top of all your jars. And then you don't want to tighten these down a lot lot just you just want to put your band on the jar and I'm gonna use my little towel here to hold it because they kind of hot and just just cinch them down they say where they're they're uh, fingertip tight uh, I might go more or less a little bit more but you know about like that just don't don't, don't use any real force to uh, get your uh, to, uh, to do it my lid fell off of that one so I'm gonna rewipe the thing and uh just keep going around until you, until you get them all all sealed all right the next step was we're gonna put the uh the jars in the pressure canner you know I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid to this to here. 
just to get it back up to that mark at the bottom. And I was gonna go ahead and put the jars in. Always make sure you got your, your, your bottom of the rack uh, in there, which comes with the pressure pot because you don't want the jars hitting the, uh, the bottom of the pot directly. I might have to do one more. I'll see how many I can fit. Uh, don't know if I can get another one in there. Oops. Let me see. I think I can. Let me get one more set up. All right, I'm going to add one more drawer. And that's about the max max capacity for my canner. Now we're going to put the uh, the lid on. Yeah, there's a there's a mark on the lid that you line up, which is uh right here you line up with this that one there and you just close it I like putting it like that you crack your fire to high and you watch right here and when steam starts coming out you lower your fire till you barely see steam coming out you do that for 10 minutes Okay, so we got steam starting to come out. Like I said, I got the fire on a medium low heat. You just want it barely coming out because as it's coming out, it's evaporating water from your pot. So you're trying to minimize that. That's why you don't want it on a steady high heat because you have too much steam coming out. So just keep it minimized to where you barely see in the steam coming out. And like I said, time it for uh, around 10 minutes. All right, the, uh, this is the uh, regulator itself. And it's three pieces. I'm only going to show you two of them because I'm doing 10 pounds. This one piece alone is five pounds of pressure. You add this ring to it, that makes it 10 pounds of pressure. So basically, you, just, you add the ring to the top. And you crank up the fire to high. And what you notice is this little back thing popped up. And that's normal. That's, that's what it should do. That's going to seal it. Eventually, this will this will seal and the steam will try to come out of here and this is going to start moving so just leave it on high and when this starts moving you, you lower your fire down to where it's barely moving and I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you that shortly um, it'll take another you see how the air is coming out of this one still it's not quite sealed yet but it's it's, it's getting there and uh you know with up to five minutes it might take for this to finally seal and this here to start moving so just crank it up uh, zero to a thousand feet you always use 10 pounds of pressure uh, anything over a thousand feet you got to use 15 pounds of pressure uh, but any canning book I use the uh, the ball canning book uh, it'll, it'll show you the altitude and and what what regulator to use I'm in South Louisiana so I'm definitely below a thousand feet but I always use uh, 10 pounds of pressure and like I said we're just gonna leave the fire cranked up when this starts to jiggle we're gonna lower it down and, and try to get the jiggle to where it's barely moving but you still want it to move it can't just be sitting there all right starting to move good now the back piece sealed up got steam coming out basically you want to crank it down and when that starts to happen that's when you want to start timing it as soon as it starts to move like that you want to do uh, 20 minutes and uh, I'll just keep adjusting my fire uh, as low as I can go while this is still moving because the more if this is moving too much it's, there's too much steam building up inside the pot it might make some of the liquid come out the jars so that's why I try to keep it as low as I can uh, just in case there was any jars I didn't get quite tight enough or too much it won't affect the liquid escaping as much so I always try to keep it real low uh, and if it stops moving just crank the heat up I usually go all the way until it starts moving again and then lower it back down slowly to try to get it to the right uh, level uh, 
probably can go a little less than that but uh you want it just barely spinning around the top so we're gonna do 20 minutes then I'll show you the next step And we've been about five minutes into it. Uh, that's how my my top is moving. Uh, I'm not gonna show you my my flame, but it's very very low. I may try to go a little bit. Well, when you get to this stage, usually when you try to go lower, it'll stop moving. Then you gotta crank it up again. But that's about how you want it. You want it barely rocking, and you'll notice it spin a little bit. It'll take a little while to spin around, but that's how you want it, just like that. All right, we just hit 20 minutes. Go ahead and turn your fire off. And this is gonna to continue to move for quite a while. It'll just get lower and lower. Then it'll quit moving. But if you notice back here, this little valve, you gotta wait till that valve drops flat with the, the pot. Then it's safe to remove this. So just Turn the fire off. You can move it off the uh, the heat where you had it at. It'll make it cool a little, a little quicker. But I usually just leave it. I mean, the pot's kind of heavy. Plus, it's full of steam. So, just like you can see, it's already starting to stop. But this is going to take about 20 to 30 minutes to drop. And then once that drops, they say once it drops, I think you wait another five minutes before taking this off. But usually when this drops, I just carefully take that off. And then you let it sit for another 10 minutes before you open the lid. And just when you open the lid, be careful because there still might be a little steam in it. Just open it well, like this, where you don't open it like this, where the steam will come at you. You open it like this, where the steam goes that way. If there's any left, there's usually not. So now we just got to wait. Like I said, I'll wait. Then I'll take the, uh, I'll show you when I take the lid off. All right. It took about 35 minutes for the, uh, this top, this, uh, this little pop-up thing to finally drop down so that means the steam is, is is finally released so we can go ahead and remove this cap and you heard a little bit of steam come out and I was gonna go ahead and uh, they say you should wait a little while longer but I've never had an issue doing it like this just when you open it you know just you can still see steam coming out so the uh, we'll, we'll leave it set for a little while I mean they still got some steam in there so when you see that drop, you remove this. I think it says to wait an additional 10 minutes before taking the lid off. So uh, I'm gonna take it off now. I feel pretty pretty confident. Like I said, just uh, I think the reason is if you take it off too soon, you might your jars might crack because of the the, the the temperature change. But I've never had an issue. So basically, just take it off, and that's it. Is done uh, basically take the jars out and set them to the side and that's what I'm about to do well apparently I screwed up on one of my jars because as you can see this one has stuff written on it so I didn't use a new cap so I'm gonna just stick this one in the refrigerator because even though it seals, it probably won't be a good seal because you can't reuse these lids. I don't know how I did that. So uh, there you go. That's how you pressure can uh, chicken stock from uh, start to finish, except for actually making the stock. But the uh, I mean, just boil your bones for about two hours, strain the juice, let it cool overnight, strain off the fat, reheat it up, jar it in your jars, throw it in a pressure can 20 minutes then uh just wait until the pressure comes off the pot but that's how you do it very easy and like i said don't cost much and you can just keep reusing the jars the only thing you got to buy is new lids the bands last i usually take the bands off once the lids seal for 24 hours because they're not needed then i wash them that way they don't rust and just keep reusing the bands thanks for watching if you enjoy my channel please subscribe thank you